Happy Chinese New Year, everybody. Since 2017 is the year of the rooster, I wanted to print a really cool print for that. And I printed it in some Algex Blue Dura filament that I got from my friends at Algex 3D. How'd it do? Well, it was a bit of an adventure getting it to work. So let me tell you a little bit about that. Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor and Gong Si Fa Chai, everyone. Apologies to native Chinese speakers. I, I never did quite get the accents right. But, Happy Chinese New Year. So, I got this 3D model off of Thingiverse. It was scanned by Bernie Solo at his Solo Studios. And I will put a link wherever links are found for this model. When he uploaded it to Thingiverse, he said that it needed supports. But I looked at this model and... To me, it seemed like it might print without them. There were, cer were certainly some spots with some extreme overhangs, especially under the wings and the beak was kind of pushing things a little bit. But there was nothing that was dangling. The tail goes straight into the bottom, so it has something to attach to, the feet attach. Overall, I thought there was a chance that this would print without supports. And in fact, since it has no big flat tops, I didn't need any infill for this, potentially. So I decided to print this without any infill and without any supports to see how it turned out. Now, I was also printing this in a new filament. Algex Dura is their Dura line of filament, which they say is better than PLA or ABS even for temperature resistance and chemical resistance, and yet prints easier than PLA. Now, I do a lot of different filaments, and I try them out all the time, so I've come up with a little test print that I can use to determine if I've got my settings dialed in. Hopefully I just set it to go and it'll tell me if supports remove nicely, if I've got the temperature right for removing supports and all those things. This first one didn't finish. It's supposed to have two little towers off the top that'll tell me if I've got the stringing right. It didn't finish. The build plate slipped underneath it and, and my build plate is removable and held on with magnets and somehow this caught and slipped. Now, I should have thought that that was a problem at the time, but I had something else pop up. When I pulled this off of the build plate, the build plate came with it. I was printing it on a sheet of build tack, and, and you can still see there's still build tack attached to this test print. It absolutely would not come off. Also, the supports on this did not want to remove. It adhered so well to itself that the supports just did not want to come off for anything. I had to wrestle and try to get them off. And even then, the, the scarring for the supports is worse than ever. However, this print made me realize that my test print was missing out on one very important piece. Uh, two very important pieces, in fact. How well does it do a very flat top? And uh, does it do high detail very well? Which PLA does well, but ABS doesn't do well. And so I changed the test print. Now, of course, I also changed my build plate because, rest in per peace, sweet prints, this build tack is toast because of this print. So the first thing to know about printing with Dura is make sure you put down a layer of something dispensable, hairspray, glue stick, something that will hold onto it while it's printing and if it will not release, if it will not let it go, at least it won't take anything permanent with it. Now, I, to solve this, went back to my Gecko Tech build plate, but I coated it with hairspray. Now, the Gecko Tech is holding on to the hairspray, and the hairspray is holding on to the print. And you know what? I don't feel too bad about this. I haven't used hairspray since I started using build tech. Now that I can't use build tech, I'm back to using hairspray. And I, I kind of got to be a bit snobbish about hairspray and saying, you shouldn't need to use hairspray because build tech is all that you need. But this print really showed me why it's sometimes a good thing to have hairspray or glue stick or something down on your build plate that you're not going to mind losing because I really miss my build, build tech. So I changed the test print. Now this test print still has the tall towers, one of them very tall, but to let me know if we have any stringing and to let me know what happens when it gets to cooking the print. And I think this tower needs to be made a little bit taller, and I think this first tower can be gotten rid of. But it's got a big flat area. It's got a scan of a drag, uh, dragon, lion. It's got a scan of a lion. I think that's a, the New York City Library 
lying on there. But it's still got the area underneath for overhangs. And it's got, well, I can't show you on this one because the supports just did not remove from this one. But I can show you on this one. I managed to get down to it. There's a, there's a little sphere, uh, a, the bottom side of a sphere that's being supported. And if it's a good... Uh, support and if it will remove easily that should look perfectly like a sphere and in neither of these cases does it but you know what that's okay so with dura since supports don't want to remove since it adheres so well to itself and it really does the layers are adhering better than almost any material i've seen outside of ninja flex uh, but it means that you can't use supports with this you have to design with y h and t in mind so that you can uh, have those gentle overhangs and things like that. Now, as far as printing the rooster goes, that's not a problem because this one is designed with those in mind, so no supports were hopefully necessary to print this one. With the test prints out of the way, I decided to start with the rooster. And the first print with it didn't get very far. It showed some major curling, and that caused it to lift up, grab the build nozzle, and pull my removable build plate off, which was just awful. So I decided to not print with the fan on. I took the fan off and I tried again. Second print, got a little bit further, but didn't make it as well. Third print, third print wasn't much better. So by the fourth print, I was clamping down that build plate, making sure that it can't go anywhere. And it got a little bit further before it too failed, but I noticed that in addition to the curling, I wasn't getting very good layers. Where there was any amount of overhang, I was seeing gaps form. The, the filament was just stretching and snapping, and there were holes in the print, which was absolutely awful. And since the curling wasn't going away with or without the fan, I decided I'll just turn the fan back on, clamp down that build plate, put lots of hairspray on to make sure that it sticks, and try it again. And I added a skirt to the print to just give it plenty of area to adhere to. And then, finally, it succeeded. Well, it mostly succeeded. There are still some parts of the print that have little holes in them that I'm not quite happy with and I'm not sure how I'm going to fill those in. Maybe I'll just make sure it shows on my shelf from the good side. And the very tip of it got really melty where it did nothing but hang out in that area and have plenty of time to cook that. So I'll probably just clip that off with some clippers and see if I can clean it off. Now, as far as the brim goes on here, or skirt, I think this is called the brim. I can never remember which one's which. There's a brim and there's a skirt, and one of them's just an outline around it that doesn't touch it, and one of it's several outlines that do touch it. And in Simplify 3D, they're both under the same thing, which I agree with. They're the same idea. But if you've never used one of these on a print, they, they increase adhesion. They give it a nice big area to adhere to. Uh, and if, if there's any curling to be had, the curling happens here. But then after the print, it's really easy, even with this Dura that likes to stick to itself, it's really easy to just pull that off and now we've got a nice clean print and I can just throw that away. Now, according to the temperature guide for Dura, it prints at a lower temperature than even PLA, but it has a higher temperature resistance than even ABS and that really made me raise my eyebrows. I decided I was going to test it out. Okay, here we go. Highly unscientific testing going on here. Let's just heat this up a little bit. Now, I have no idea what temperature I'm getting this to. I just want to see if it gets soft very easily like PLA, or if after it gets melty, it still holds on to its properties a little bit. I can feel the heat coming off of that, so I'm going to test it out now. And it's squishy, but it's not soft like PLA. I mean, now that it's hot, I can give it a good squeeze and it responds and squishes. But then again, so does ABS at those temperatures. If this were PLA, it would have completely given way at this point. Now, Dura is also a lot more flexible than PLA. Even the final prints are just more bendy than PLA, even when they're cold. So this stuff is 
weird. There's some black magic going on here that it prints at such a low temperature and yet still retains a significant degree of heat resistance. I don't know what's going on here, but I kind of like this stuff. For comparison, here's an ABS dice that I printed a while ago. Right, and, yeah, just like the Dora, it's just a little bit squishy, but it's not really giving way underneath my plier grip as much. Well, that's ruined now, but it proves the point that this Dura is, I don't know if it's actually as temperature resistant as ABS, but it holds its own when it comes to heat, and that's really impressive. So being the professor, of course, I have to grade the Dura filament, and I realized that my rubric didn't include anything about curling, and so I added that to this rubric, and of course I had to knock it off some points for having some really significant curling going on. There's also no finishing option for Dura that I know of. It doesn't smooth with acetone, and if there is a chemical that smooths it, I don't know if it's a readily available chemical. I don't know, I don't know if it has a nice finishing option besides the standard finishing options that you could use for anything hitting it with a two-coat epoxy or whatever. Also, it destroys build plates, so it has to lose a few points for that. However, it does have good temperature resistance. It says it has good chemical resistance, so I'm going to trust them on this one. It's pleasant. It doesn't create any nasty odors while it's printing. It does high detail real well if you put a fan on it. In fact, the only really downside to it that I can see to Dura is it's kind of hard to get a hold of. It's not nearly as ubiquitous as PLA or ABS is. You can find it, but you kind of have to look for it specifically. Still, its overall grade is comparable to ABS and PLA. Oh, except that now that the rubrics change, now that we're including curling in there, ABS gets a lower score than it. So ABS, this has actually knocked ABS down a notch, in my opinion. Now, if Dura didn't curl so bad, this would be a fantastic material. As it is, it's still a really good material. And I recommend trying it out. So there we go. Happy Chinese New Year, everybody. And I hope that uh, 2017 is a prosperous one for everybody. I hope that the year of the rooster is good to you. And I thank you very much for watching. As always, safety first, and I'll see you next time.